This week we get our mast installed and attempt to fix our water heater, do things like fit our memory foam topper and add our water filter. We also install our sails and go for our first test sail. Yay! Along with finishing up other chores, we have lots of fun. We are currently suburban homeowners. We'd love to be sailing cruisers, but for now, we're in the middle. Well, we're getting the mast up today. It's going to be right down there in the well. You can see they're launching another boat right now. Right after that, we're going to go down there and more up and then they're gonna put the mast on. So there she is and the well and there's the mast. We're just waiting for the crane now. Just gave the mast a good clean. Looking much better. Well, she's looking like a proper sailboat now. Mast is on and all the rigging. Just need to put the sails on next time. And we'll be good to go. One week later, we return to do just that. But first, if you recall, we had a broken water heater. So we try to fix it. Okay, so testing out the water heater, not working. We're currently draining the water, water out of the water heater. Replace the heating element. What was that noise? Oh, that was a bell phone. Did you take a picture of this? I didn't, but I have it on can't tape right now. Okay, so the brown goes on the left hand side of the element. The red goes to the other side. Brown right. left, red, right. Well, do you want to write this down? I can't really see. But they have the wiring diagram right here. Oh, and they have it right on it there. It says black, too. green. Yeah, they have it right on there, too. They have the instructions, but Stefan's not looking at it. Should I turn the pump back on? No. It will end up the bilge will dry it out afterwards. Element seems quite differently shaped from the one that we bought. Again, it's a replacement part, but it says it's the same. There's two different. I don't know what the heating element. Yeah, because the heating element. I mean, that there's another thing that might have fucked it up. If the heating element, if we bought the 240 heating element versus the 120. But it says it's 240, so... 120. Does this one say on it? Well, this one says 120. And that would lead me to believe that that's the 120 switch as well. So well, I think so they have the wrong parts. I mean, that doesn't even look remotely close, obviously. Well, I guess if we want to use any water, though, you have to put it back in. It said on the outside we determined that it was a 240. It says 240 right on there. But this says 120. Will that not fit in there? It'll fit, but 
So what if you put the 240 volt heating element and the 240 volt thing on it? Is that gonna is that gonna break things? No, but I mean, I don't think it's gonna work right. What do you mean? Is how is it not gonna work right? Well, I don't know that it's gonna heat the water up properly. Well, yeah. maybe they had the wrong shit in it in the first place. Like, why does the why does the case say it's a 240 when well, it's actually a two or that when I mean, it's actually 120? A, we're in America, it's, you know, unless it's on a I mean, so from a, an electrical perspective, it should be 120 because of everything in the boat. But sure. I guess I'm not getting my shower this weekend either. At least I could take one up at the fucking place. So this is a little mean to mark it 240. Yeah. So the the water heater says it's a 240, although we're in the United States, so logically it'd be 120. The replacement parts we ordered. We, you know, went off, went set on the case of the freaking water heater. So we have a 120 heating element and a 120, whatever this is, the thermostat or the high, temp high temperature thingy. But we think it's the heating element. We're putting the 240 heating element in anyway because it probably won't work. But well, you know, I think it'll work, but it'll just work like it will work. Shittily. Yeah, poorly. So we'll order the new parts and. Hey, at least we'll know how to switch it out next time. I guess. I'm just kind of pissed. It's not, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. So. It's a learning experience, right? Yeah, well, I guess if I'd seen the pictures, we probably would have known. Because this is obviously not the same as... This is it. This one. It looks like this. It's this shape. I mean, there's no way to tell the heating element from the outside. Well, no, but we could have told, gone by the thermostat, and that was the, the only... thermostat's the same. Well, not the thermostat. The uh, switch. The high temperature switch. This thing. Now we know more than we did before about... I guess you're just much more patient than me, but whatever. Well, there's nothing we could do anyway, so... I mean, you're the one doing all the work, so I don't know why. I'm, I just, I'm never going to get to take a shower on the boat. Yeah, you're never, that's clearly the conclusion to yep. draw. It'll never happen. After these, I'm kind of starting to feel like, you know, not a hot water shower. Well, just wait a couple more months and then you want a cold water. Okay, you've got it running. It hasn't triggered the, the switch that it was triggering before. And the breaker was flipping before. So, even though the heating element is for a 240. Well, I think, here's my theory. I think it's either a two, I mean, it's it's made to be a 240 volt, yep. right? Because it's made for yeah. EPM power. Um, but because it's hooked up to North American shore power, they just put in what the optional 120 element. But 240 still works on 120 think, well, if everything's running through it. I just... I mean, I think it might take longer to heat. To heat. One of the things we're doing this weekend is putting in the. I got a two-inch memory foam topper um, for the app cabin because these mattresses are a little hard for me. Um, Stefan likes them. But um, it's a king size, and it fits in here. I mean, pretty good actually. I just had to I trimmed about this much off the um, starboard side, and then I've got to trim up a little bit here at the top. And then I'm going to put a king size sheet over it, and I think it'll be good. I guess we'll see. I mean, it's a two-inch one. They have them all the way up to like four inches, but because it's kind of tight there, I didn't want to get too thick. I mean, I guess I could have just totally replaced this. But anyway, we'll see how this works. Okay, putting this bottom sheet on. Yeah, it was um, challenging. The foam was kind of sticky. Um, it's a little warm. It's not that warm, actually. I mean, we're in Bayfield, Wisconsin. Um, but I'm sweating. And getting a fitted sheet on in one of these is pretty fun. Anyway.
for our forever boat, we're going to have an island for us. At least that's my hope. Anyway, I know I necessarily don't have to put sheets on, but I prefer sheets, you know, when we have the boat. just want to have proper bedding as much as possible. While I was fighting with mattresses, installing sheets, Stefan was up trying to assess whether we could install sails or not. It was too windy, so instead he installed our water filter. It doesn't look bad of an installation, does it? No, it's good. The next day, we installed sails. It is like 7.30 on Saturday, and Stefan has been up for a while now putting his sails on the boat because he's diligent and excited to sail. I am too, but I also like to sleep on Saturday because since we're not cruisers, I'm still working. I'm usually in a meeting by 7.30 every day. Um, but he made me coffee like he does every morning. Um, before I went up. I should probably try to get up here and... I mean, I've never put sails in a boat, neither has he, well, a smaller boat. So, he's figuring it out and I'm... snoozing. Anyway. I'm not gonna... Apparently there's a problem with the head sail. The furler is fine. But he says when he puts a sail in there, only, he can only throw it in so much and then it gets caught, so we gotta figure it out. It's making him a little crabby. Difficulty because uh, we get the we get the mainsail up and then we start furling it in and then it gets jammed and won't roll, even though there's no problem with the furler itself. And why is this, Stefan, now that I made him watch a video and calm down, why is this? I didn't watch the whole video, I watched the first five seconds. And then he figured out what the problem was? This part is supposed to go up to the top. Oh, okay. No, stay down at the bottom. I couldn't figure out what this was for anyway. This yeah. is for the... So when you, when he was, which the video he said, which didn't watch him, but as soon as he started watching the first five seconds, I'm guessing the guy hooked the top of the headsail yeah, to really that. Important. I'm sure he was about to, but I'm like, ah. Uh, Anyway, someone was a little grumpy, but I, hopefully this works. It'll work. Okay, we are now inside finishing watching the video because after a second attempt, Stefan missed something. Uh, that was actually the fourth attempt? Third attempt? Fourth attempt. Anyway, so now, even though he says he has it now, we're going to watch the entire video and then we're going to go out there. The video is what? Hoisting a furling chip by sail. Fanatics. Thank you, Sail Fanatics. For the who knows what number time. Try. Will it work this time? He does admit to having it, using his words, horked up. Okay, so you know, we've sailed a lot, but we've never put sails on a boat like this, and we're learning. That's what this boat is for. By the time we get our forever boat, we will have this shit down, bitches. Hopefully. <laughs> Finally! Woohoo! Now for the main sale. After we watch a video. After we watch a video. With a regular main sale like ours, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing's furling. So it's just going up and down the track. So Every time you put it up or down, you have access to the head of the sail. Whereas with the furling jib, you put it up once and then you can, under normal circumstances, you're not going to take that sail down yeah. until you, right. So my point is with a mainsail, if we rig something wrong, it's easy just to take it down and fix it. I guess the jib's not that hard either now, now that we have done it a couple of times. I've done it like five times this morning. <laughs> that's okay. That's how we learn. These sails are the older sails, right? Yeah. Right, so let the fun begin.
Or no? Yeah. On. We still have to research the briefing. Which we know we have wrong. So we're gonna research some reefing lines. I'm gonna cook some food and we'll go from there. So because we have to rerun the reef line rigging, because it's we think it's in wrong. We're pretty sure it's in wrong. I mean, it's in wrong. Pretty sure it's in wrong. So we're gonna uh, rerun it so that we can um, do it right. But we have to pull it through the um, boom. boom so that we can rerun rerun it over the pulley and up through the sail and back down. Anyway, that's what we're going to go do now. We were right. We were supposed to go under the pulley. We looked up the Charleston Spar boom, whatever rigging. We have now have it rigged with the, both reef lines correctly. There was also a nest in our Ooh. It kept on coming out as we were pulling the line through. So that is now gone. Anyway, well, most of it. There's still some stuff in there. Now we're going to raise it up and see if we did good work. This is our first time out on the lake. Motoring out. There's a loon over there. You can see it. We're sailing. Our sails are a little wonky because we found out that our reefing lines are not long enough because they had them in there wrong. Um, and also we have uh, one reefing line wrapped around the waist jack. We gotta fix that when we get back. But overall, it's all good. It's a beautiful day. We packed a couple times. Stefan's happy. So we are docked in our new and final docking spot at Port Side. And we, I don't know, we kind of overshot a little bit, but we got in here. We figured out our perfect line for our spring line for docking where we can hook up and just drop it and we should be good. Um, I did, however, cut my foot because I was barefoot. Hit it on something over here, which stuff I'm going to tape up. Now we're going to clean up and we'll be all good. Okay, so Stefan's replacing some of the labels on our, what are those things called? Locks? I'm not sure. Anyway, the little Clutches. things. The, the, the line clutches? We don't know what they're called. I think they're called clutches. Anyway, so he had printed some with our fancy label maker, but one thing we learned is that... They're not UV stable. Our <laughs> label maker... Completely blank. <laughs> not that that was a huge deal, but... Um, so he's replacing some of the labels. Uh, we're also going to rerun... Well, we're going to look for another line to replace the... Second reef line because it's too short, which we learned when we were out there sailing because we couldn't pull the sail properly all the way up. The main sail was like kind of <laughs> because the reef line was too short. And we also wrapped, um, put the reef lines in the main sail at the. Okay, so we, we ran the line correctly, but we put the reef lines in wrong, so they were like wrapped around. So basically, when we were trying to bring the main sail down, we couldn't pull the reefing lines in because they were like knotted on the. On the sail. Anyway, so we're going to fix that <laughs> with the one line that's long enough. Briefing line one is long enough, but we need to find... What's sad is that this is a brand new line, whoever owned the boat before. Brand new line. Luckily, we have so much line that we're hoping we have one that's long enough. Sure. Anyway, so that's what's on the agenda for this evening. After fixing the reefing lines, we headed in for one more chore. Stefan is changing the impeller, right? Well, it's you were going to. to removing the impeller pump. So number one, we didn't know it was broken. We didn't, but that's why we were checking it. And it's only one 
one piece. I had a bit of find it in the heat exchanger. Um, but he had ordered a replacement part, but where have we ordered it from? So that's the wrong size. It's just a kit from Amazon, but... Anyway, um, so we won't be fixing it today. We'll be removing it and taking removing. it home. So Stefan actually ordered the wrong kit. Yes, he did. Because there's a difference between the raw water and fresh water intake one, as we said. Yeah. I just ordered it because it was $30 cheaper. But the reason it was $30 cheaper <laughs> is apparently these parts are different. Lesson learned. Thanks for stopping by. Join us next time and meet our dinghy, Sam Bell, and sail with us to Raspberry Island. And if you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.